Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand for its and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you are new, a warm welcome to you and if you are returning, an equally warm welcome to you. And last week, I um, asked for you guys to see if I could get 100 likes on the uh, weekly uh, analysis video and um, thankfully, um, you gave it 161 likes and uh, in exchange for the likes, I said I would do a webinar, free webinar, really um, the rules to the fundamental analysis game. Um, you won't see anything like this on YouTube. Um, there's a lot of misunderstandings about fundamental analysis. So if you want to, as a, as a thank you for uh, giving me the uh, 100 likes uh, target and you way exceeded that, um, I, um, to those of you uh, who want to join the webinar this Thursday, the 14th of October, 8 p.m. London time, um, please email info at trading180.com with the subject title FA webinar. I've got, had a few um, uh, emails from uh, people who have not put that in the title, although they want to be a part of the webinar. They uh, they haven't put that, and um, you need to put that in the webinar. So if you haven't put that in in the uh, in the uh, email subject title, please make sure that you've put FA webinar so I can put you on the list and the Zoom link uh, to that private. Um, <clears throat> webinar which will not be um, uh, uh, for YouTube I'm not going to put it out anywhere but um, for, but only for those who actually were in the um, uh, who, who had emailed me uh, are going to get the uh, recording of that so they can watch it um, uh, later and also some of the things I'm going to be covering in the webinar uh, are going to be the missing information, the misinformation about fundamental analysis, using fundamental and uh, divergences or convergences to select currency pairs likely to trend, the importance of liquidity and slippage, buying the rumor and what is priced in, gathering fundamental evidence, 2021 euro dollar fundamental analysis case study. That's going to be very interesting. So I'm going to be showing you, um, you know, the the, uh, the euro dollar so far and really the turning points and the fundamental turning points not only with uh, um, uh, um, and how it applied to price and also risk of sentiment so uh, it's my process from really from top to bottom and also as well don't forget that uh, the trading 180 2021 course enrollment opens Monday the 11th of October visit trading 180.com and it will close um, it's only open for a week and it's, it's going to close next week Sunday the 17th of October and it won't be open until 2022 it's going to be my last intake many people think you know they, they can kind of join whenever they want unfortunately that's not how it goes I really like to focus on a, on, on a group of people at a time so we can get the best out of um, out of the mentoring um and so that's the best way to really um uh to to for, for you guys to to learn in that kind of environment is in a kind of class environment where everyone's on the same page so um i will be closing that 17th of october never to be opened again for this year and maybe you know i don't know i might do it january february march depending on how i feel um uh, might reopen it again then so it's going to be a last chance for this year so visit trading180.com if you are uh, interested anyways let's get into the uh this week's fundamental analysis and looking at the week ahead so the week ahead um let me just zoom in a little bit We've got third quarter earnings seasons, and that is uh, with the with the stocks. While minutes from the last FOMC meeting will be watched for further cues on the on the Fed's tapering timeline. Right, that is going to be a, a really important um, measure, and I'll get into it in in um, as we uh, analyze the dollar. So, other important releases to follow include U.S. and China and India inflation rates, U.S. retail uh, sales, U.K. and Australia jobs report, eurozone industrial output and Japan machinery orders so um, yeah I'll get into uh, the, the technicals and I guess the fundamentals now um, a bit more in depth but that's what's coming up this week some as a market moving news especially uh, with regards to the uh, the US at the moment so let's look at um, the dollar index the DXY and uh, the dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength against or weakness against 
um, a basket of the major currencies like the euro, the yen, the pound, for example. And um, at the moment, we are really at these uh, these highs. And the dollar index hasn't really sold off, even though we did have some really disappointing news. Um, in fact, I shouldn't really be that one. It should be this one. So US uh, payrolls growth misses again with the smallest gain of the year. So, um, But there was some positive news around this. So unemployment rate did fall um, as size of labor force shrinks. and But the employment rate only rose by um, 194,000 in September, which was the smallest this year. So US jobs growth in September was the slowest this year, signaling a tempering of the labor market market recovering and complicating a potential decision by the Fed, uh, Federal Reserve to begin scaling back monetary support before the year ends. So the non-farm payrolls increased 194,000 last month in an upwardly revised 366,000 gain in August. A Labour Market Department report showed on Friday the unemployment rate fell 4.8, partly reflecting a decline in labour force participation among women. And meanwhile, average hourly earnings jumped. So there's a lot of pressure there's a lot of pressure um, uh, with regards to what the Federal Reserve should do. So the September increase was weaker uh, than all but one estimate in a Bloomberg survey of, econ of economists. The median projection was for 500,000 rise. The US stock fluctuated, Treasury yields rose and the dollar remained lower. So they expected 500,000, only got 194,000. So on the surface, the numbers seem um, you know, quite uh, quite bad, right? But there again, there was some positive um, numbers regarding uh, unemployment and actual wage growth, which gives the Fed a bit of a headache. And initially, um, you know, it was probably like looking for, you know, any kind of short trades on the dollar. But um, after doing some weekend reading, the Fed seen pushing ahead with November despite payrolls miss. So jobs likely to meet the test for substantial further progress and wage growth and unemployment rates suggest job market tightness. So um, again, there is some positivity around it and the Federal Reserve policymakers will likely look through September's weakening in the US labor market recovery and take their further step to removing pandemic stimulus uh, at their meeting next month. So this is a quote from um, a chief economist um, with high frequency economics. And he says, uh, Rubila uh, Faruqi says that this does not change the Fed's taper timeline, even though I, I probably would have thought it was. It would have. Um, for, the Fed, for the Fed taper, the standards on both inflation and the labor market have likely been met. However, this says little about policy tightening, which has much more stringent test and is some time off. So there's a difference, in fact, between um, tapering and tightening, basically hiking rates. So although they may start to potentially look to um, um, t uh, taper, which is basically the reduction of, um, of bond purchases, basically debt buying, um, hiking may be some time off. So at the moment, the Federal Reserve and the dollar is in a bit of a precarious situation. There's, there's a lot of uncertainty, whereas if, if, the, if the job numbers had met their 500k uh, target, you would probably expect some sort of if, if, you know, um, upward move. It might have gone down a little bit, but generally the, the, the path of least resistance would have been probably to the upside. Now, although the rumour is that the Fed may look past um, the poor uh, recent jobs numbers, um, personally, I'm not so sure on that. And I think that um, ultimately the dollar probably may start to um, look to potentially start to range or, um, you know, uh, move to the downside again, depending on the narrative. So if you believe or if you think uh, that the uh, the dollar should get weaker in the short term, uh, this is the dollar uh, dollar index, what you're just looking at, this is just for confluence, right? So you're looking at dollar index, we're at quite a, a, a really kind of important supply zone. The next really supply zone is all the way back at the 96 area. So if you think the dollar is going to strengthen um, on the back of uh, the news or the potential rumor that the Federal Reserve is still going to look to tighten, then um, pretty much what you're looking for is is really kind of pullbacks. And I would say the nearest pullback would be at the 93 area. So if you 
prices do pull back down here, then what you're looking for is buy trades on the you know the dollar yen, dollar Swiss, dollar CAD. There's confluence right in that demand zone on the DXY. But for me, I think um, overall I'm probably more still more bullish dollar. But I think the, the dollar um, move is probably now going to be a bit overdone in the, at least in the short term. Um, uh, because of the uh, disappointing news so uh, let's see what happens even though the fed are potentially still going to taper does that mean that the dollar really is going to continue trending higher if um, there is disappointing news so uh, for me I, it's it's highly unlikely i think the data has to support the narrative there has to be some good jobs data in order for the um the federal reserve to continue to look to high rates um um at the dates that they say they will so a bit indifferent on the dollar so but i think long term should be uh potentially a buy so any kind of pullbacks i think are decent uh buyers but for this week um i'm um, a bit indifferent about the dollar uh looking at the dollar yen and the dollar yen again we got a um, bit of a reaction i think a lot of traders were getting short in and around these areas and uh prices have pretty much gone to the upside um, so we could see, matter of fact, uh, price that may be a bit of a stop hunt at the top if price start to close back inside that level. But um, for me, the dollar is still a buy over the Japanese yen. The Japanese yen in monetary policy terms are way behind the curve when it comes to um, hiking rates or even looking to you know taper at any point. So any pullbacks into these zones, I think, in the short term. Um, you know this 1146 area down to the 111 area I think is going to be a really nice buy and I think in fact if we're looking at this from a range low to a range high now making higher highs uh, that higher low is going to be the strongest area of demand so I think this if the price does pull back to that 111 area I think that actually is going to be a decent buy technically I do like that that also has some confluence of um, uh, some support and resistance right here as well so technically there's a lot of things that do line up with this so i think um ultimately i don't want to be a buyer of the dollar um, against the yen in and around this area if that was a currency pair i'm looking to uh, if i was looking to buy the dollar looking to sell the dollar probably not against the japanese yen unless there is some sort of risk off sentiment that really uh, takes over uh, the market looking at the dollar swiss dollar swiss um again technically not fantastic but um Again, similar with the dollar yen, um, the Swiss franc is a risk off currency. Um, again, way behind the curve when it comes to monetary policy and hiking rates. So I think, again, um, any pullbacks into any of these zones potentially are still buying opportunities if you want to still buy the dollar. But um, I do think the upside potential um, uh, is is a bit um, done. If prices do come up, I think this is going to be definitely a level that traders are going to look for. This is the yearly, you know, the yearly high, the 2021 highs, and I think there's going to be a lot of profit taking in and around here. The question, you know, I say to the traders in the uh, private mentoring group is, what is going to push prices way beyond here? You know, um, if if there's you know uncertainty around the dollar and hiking rates then um you know there's got to be a, a limit to really the upside move so i think if prices do come up to this uh, this area here this 93 0 0.9350 i think that's actually quite a nice uh short technically uh, fundamentally i'm not keen on buying the uh the um the swiss franc but from a short dollar and a weaker dollar perspective that could be a decent area to look for any kind of short trades or any long trades at these uh, demand zones if you get a pullback uh dollar cad is now actually on my list right it's on my list of uh things to trade reason being is because the canadian dollar actually had on friday even though the headlines were all about the non-farms miss uh, the uh, the uh, Canadian dollar had a great jobs number, really kind of exceeding expectations. So I think there's a bit of a divergence there. The Bank of Canada are looking to uh, potentially look to also taper um, and hike um, at some point. So I believe if there is some um, uh, divergences, and I think there probably is between the Bank of Canada and the uh, the US dollar, do like this uh, pullback for a short this one two six area for a nice short trade there also is a bit of a supply zone a wide supply zone there but uh, within that wide supply zone you've got areas of 
uh, support and resistance which I do like so I think that area there is going to be really nice for a potential uh, short as well but the immediate short I think for me um, is going to be any kind of pullback into that zone if you do want to be a buyer of the um, dollar against um, the US dollar against the Canadian dollar then pretty much I think now is a decent uh, area to look for a long trade although we have touched this area once already so twice might not necessarily be the best area I think probably down into this one, two, three, fifty to one, two, threes uh, round number would be probably a better zone. Again, just looking at, uh, if we're looking at yearly highs and yearly lows, in fact, uh, this would probably be the yearly high right here, and this is the yearly low. So um, where are we? Okay, we're basically at fair value. So I think anything, any pullback for the Canadian dollar is going to be a cheap area to look for any kind of short trade. So I do like that. And again, these zones would be bargain areas for if you're looking to buy the US dollar. Uh, New Zealand dollar, US dollar. Um, I'm really interested technically in this area here. Not necessarily the best area from a, uh, from not the best trade to take from a fundamental perspective. Um, but I think with disappointing dollar, US dollar news, I think the New Zealand dollar who have just hiked rates, any kind of pullbacks into this, um, I think that was the yearly low as well. Yep, into this yearly low area, I think is going to be. Um, uh, the more I kind of think about it, I really do like this area technically. So um, uh, while I normally wouldn't look for any kind of uh, trade on, on two pairs that are potentially strengthening, I do think with the non-farms um, uh, 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 disappointing and really the Federal Reserve um, in, a, in a bit of a situation, if prices do start to pull back into this, this yearly low, I do think that that would be a really nice um, technical uh, buy trade for the New Zealand dollar as long as the New Zealand dollar still remains um, uh, positive on their um, on their uh, their monetary policy as well as a uh, risk on sentiment remaining because if, if in a risk off situation probably the dollar looks to strengthen so that would actually you know that may actually um, cause the uh, uh, the the New Zealand dollar to weaken temporarily but who knows but I do like this area um, uh, not that sorry, not that area. I do like this area here to buy the uh, the New Zealand dollar. Technically, not necessarily the best fundamental trade in the world. Pound dollar, so pound dollar. Um, the pound has really kind of suffered recently uh, with, um, I think, more than most with supply chain problems. Um, I'm not gonna, I'm going to hesitate to put that as a supply zone, but we are in definitely a demand zone here. Let me just put that around here technically and um, you know recently if you've been reading up on um, any of the UK news we've had um, you know a, a bit of a petrol crisis supply chain problems um, as well as a, a, a an oncoming energy crisis we've got uh, the furlough scheme I think I'm not sure if it, if it ended or not or whether I think I did read something that I think Rishi Sunak our Chancellor extended uh, the furlough somewhat I'm not too sure of the exact details but also as well there was universal credit that was cut which really kind of hurts the most vulnerable in society and if the government want people to spend then um, you know by cutting universal credit um, to, to, to the most vulnerable that doesn't help with, um, with with people wanting to spend, right? Because they've got less money um, every week and every month. And £20 is quite a hefty cut as well. So um, that may have an effect on the pound going forward. So just looking at the uh, Bank of England's uh, Bailey warns of potential damaging inflation for the UK. So inflation being um, uh, the, the fact that we've got high energy prices on the horizon so the bank of england governor andrew bailey warned of a uh, potentially very damaging period of inflation for british consumers as the resumption of pre-pandemic spending habits puts pressure on supply chains so in an interview bailey said the uk inflation would exceed the bank's previous forecast so that's really high inflation um i think the previous forecast i think was maybe about something like two percent or something like that but um a flurry of news this week undercut the bank of england's original view that uh, much of the jump in prices will in, will prove transitory so transitory being kind of temporary 
Um, so now they're, they're thinking that it's obviously going to be a bit more of a sustained inflation. So uh, that's a problem. And it comes amid growing bets that spiking inflation will force the Bank of England to hike rates in the near future. But for me, I'm not so sure about them having to hike rates because um, central banks will generally hike rates in a environment um, where GDP is growing and recently GDP um, has kind of stalled and there are obviously you know issues that are on the horizon in the data so I can't see uh, the Bank of England really looking to high rates I think they're trying to um, uh, basically talk up the pound and keep the rumor going so that they can they would rather get a stronger pound than a weaker pound right because a weaker pound puts in pushes inflation up and if the pound gets weaker and inflation is already high then it just pushes inflation higher which is going to be a headache for the bank of england so for me i will continue to potentially short the uh, the pound um and if you are looking to short the pound not financial advice that's going to be a really nice area that supply zone for a short um i think that the, the us are even though bad or not the best uh, non-farm news i still think that they're they're going to be ahead of the, the british pound so that is a decent uh this that's a decent short here technically this uh, this long trade here is decent at this one three four fifty area, so decent. And I think we've got some uh, we've got a, um, a major level of uh, support and resistance, which is basically just supply past supply and demand zones that have been projected into the future. So there's a, there's definitely a key level in and around that area that's been traded. So uh, let's see what happens there. Not the best fundamental trade, but. Um, I think the path of least resistance should probably continue to the downside. Euro dollar, so Euro dollar um, on the back of the um, the bad non-farm payroll news. I think everyone's pretty much expecting now the the euro to start to uh, uh, to rise, and um, I would probably have to potentially agree with that, and I would have agreed with that um, one hundred percent had I had not read. You know previous um you know dollar news right so the fed uh seemed to potentially move ahead with the taper um again i don't know how true that is or, or how believable that is but if you do believe that then obviously the path of least resistance would be still to the downside right because you're buying the dollar in the face of um uh, of bad uh, data and if they're still looking to taper that should potentially have a potential positive um, uh, spin on on price but um, if there is if the Fed come out and pretty much say this week in their statement that they're not too sure or they're they're, they're quite dovish in their statement um, and uh, maybe have it you know have a bit of a change in tone then I think this area is actually going to be really uh, a really nice buy the only problem with it technically is that if you look to the left there's actually no um, level of demand past level of demand to really kind of take this uh, to take this trade there are some i think there are some maybe some lower time frame trades that you may want to look towards but from a daily supply and demand zone for me it's there's nothing there so i would really have to wait for proof of value proof of value meaning that the market says that there is definitely demand for the euro and this is basically the limit this is an expensive area for the us dollar once prices move to the upside, then what you want to look for, what I would probably look for is a pullback into that zone um, and then look for any kind of buy trades, uh, providing that obviously the, the, the dollar is still you know, uncertain regarding you know, hiking rates and tapering. And also there's positive, some positive news around the euro. Now with the euro, um, the uh, ECB's Villaroy says inflation to fall below 2% by end of 2022, which isn't necessarily the most positive thing, right? Because in order for central banks to hike rates, you want to see um, uh, uh, inflation above that 2% target. So um, here, was, um, here, was a, here was a quote that said, uh, a bump, even if it's high, doesn't make for a long-term trend, Villaroy said in an interview on um, France's Interradio. I don't think it's a part of a spiral, even if we need to remain very vigilant. And so what he's saying is, is that again, he doesn't think that any rises in inflation 
um, are going to be uh, a trend. It's going to be maybe just temporary. So Villaroy also dismissed a question about whether the ECB should consider raising rates, saying that the first error one can make in monetary policy would be to overreact in a temporary uh, variate sorry to a temporary variation in prices so he's definitely not hawkish on this you know and he, although he is just one member um you know there, there's definitely dovish tones to this so ultimately the way to kind of look at that is that sorry the um the European Central Bank are not really looking to high rates anytime soon. So this play, if you're looking to buy the euro, it would be more based off of anticipating dollar weakness than euro strength per se. So with that being said, um, or unless obviously, you know, the euro, uh, they do kind of ch uh, change their, their stance on this as far as there are more, their more hawkish tones start to develop and the data does support that narrative. But this would be more of a play of uh, buying or, or, or shorting the dollar rather than buying uh, the euro. So with that being said, if that's the case, I would really want to see price um, prove that there is demand, some demand there for the euro and then look for any kind of uh, pullbacks. But uh, again, the path of these resistance, I would say, is still potentially to the downside. So any moves, if not to this uh, supply zone, this supply zone here is going to be a really nice technical area. This 117 area for a potential short euro yen and the euro yen again um, uh, a pair that we were looking at in the group not necessarily just just yet but um, it seems like the uh, the yen is, is is really kind of got you know weaker we've got um, some you know some major demand zones here um, in fact I think we were waiting for the uh, the price to kind of pull back down to this uh, demand zone around here potentially before looking at getting long but who knows whether it will get down there anytime soon I do think though if prices do you know come down to this zone here I think that is going to be a really that one two seven six um, area I think that's going to be a really 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 nice zone I'm going to move this area just along here um, so yeah, I do think that that's actually quite nice um, for a, uh, a buy. Um, although the euro isn't necessarily the greatest buy in the world, it is. Um, you know, I would say they're 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 um, they're ahead of the Japanese yen and the and the um, and the Japanese economy and the Bank of Japan's uh, monetary policy. Um, any kind of risk of sentiment that comes into the market, though, the Japanese yen will strengthen. So any of these uh, areas here are decent shorts. Of course, you want to wait for more fresher areas of supply because those are the areas areas that will um, uh, are likely to hold better than uh, areas that have been touched several times. Australian dollar, US dollar. So um, uh, fundamentally, I'm really not interested in this uh, at all. I think the Australian dollar is going to be a buy at some point, but it's just at the moment, uh, the, the, the their data, they've got disappointing news. So potentially, uh, if I was looking at anywhere within that zone for a buy for the Australian dollar, it would be somewhere around here. So anywhere from uh, this zone, uh, this uh, 0.722, uh, price area where we've got a bit of support within that demand and even just below that I think that's really nice for technically and even better would be that area there again when you think about the, you know the the, uh, the, uh, the yearly highs and lows you've got um, you've got I mean yearly highs yearly lows to be fair is like that's probably the yearly high right there but if you look at the most recent uh, high and low where price is contained between then this has to be a bargain area um, for the Australian dollar and so anything below this area and come, if it comes down to here would be seen as a bit of a bargain I think um, any kind of pullbacks they are lagging behind though the um, the Federal Reserve the RBA um, again they're very dovish on their uh, their currency and again the data has to support the narrative so I think really any pullbacks to supply zones I think are going to be decent short trades and uh, again just looking at potential uh some some potential confluences you know that area there where, which has acted as support and resistance in the past you've got nice supply zone that area there is decent for a potential short but not really my um, a pair that i'm really interested in trading uh aussie yen again with some weakness in the australian dollar um that supply zone definitely got taken out we're looking at that as now demand 
decent demand in and around here um, right now is actually quite a nice shorting opportunity I do like that technically for a short but again you'd have to really understand why you're looking to buy the Japanese yen or short the Australian dollar the only time I would really look for this is to is to understand where you know risk off sentiment is so for me not necessarily fantastic um, within that wide zone of uh, demand I would probably say this is an area that would be quite nice also as well um, if you want to go down into lower time frames to get a bit more detail of where local areas of support and resistance are within these demand zones daily demand zones is obviously you know worth uh, doing as well but I do think that this area here has been touched once twice it's been definitely traded there's a lot of trading activity so for me if I was looking to buy the Australian dollar pullbacks into that zone would be that 80 just around that 80 round number would be um, would be quite a decent um, uh, buy trade I think but again um, not really a, um, a pair that I'm, I'm interested in unless the Australian dollar really kind of gets its act together when, on, on when it comes to data and finally gold so gold a bit of a mixed bag again um, uh, trades in um, in opposite to the uh, dollar so if you do believe that the dollar is going to get uh, stronger then you're looking at short trades right and you can see as the dollar has been getting stronger gold has been you know going to the downside if you zoom out a little bit um, we've got some yearly lows around here I think any kind of buying opportunities for gold is going to be really really nice um, in and around this area here this 1680 area just be careful because that is an area prime for stock hunting uh, lots of liquidity around here so um, that's um, potentially um, a great area to look for a trade doesn't mean you should take one but also it depends fundamentally on what you think is going to happen with uh, the dollar right if the dollar comes out with some really good news as I said you're going to see you know you're more likely to see prices and gold prices continue to uh, to, to go down um, but any reversals um, or, or, or misfortunes in the dollar any kind of uh, um, fed dovishness when it comes to hiking rates or a delay in hiking rates or tapering then you should see gold go to the upside uh, so we've got and let me just uh, delete some of this uh, stuff off of here from a demand zone perspective I think yeah, we've just come into this demand zone here it's created that demand zone there so uh, so decent quite decent also as well you've got an area of support and resistance in that zone there as well well so that's decent i think uh for a for a buy right again believing that the dollar is going to get weaker at some point um so yeah that's pretty much it for this week again just as a as a, i guess a quick reminder um that the um the trading 180 course enrollment opens uh, on Monday the 11th so check that out at trading180.com and also we've got the rules to the fundamental analysis game free webinar Thursday 14th of October at 8 p.m. London time please don't be late if you're more than 10 minutes late um, or 15 minutes late I probably won't allow you into the room and uh, you'll have to watch the recording afterwards as otherwise um, we could get a lot of disturbances um, I need to kind of flow and talk rather than and, um, try to deal with certain problems that maybe certain people have so try to log in at least 30 minutes before the start 25 minutes before the start get your you know your um, um, uh, zoom sorted and then we can uh, hopefully um, have this uh, webinar um, uh, technical uh, uh, problem free if you know what I mean because generally when we do uh, say generally but sometimes when we have these webinars uh, sometimes there can be some technical issues for some people so we can try and sort them out before um, we actually start the webinar so um, so yeah try and try and get there uh, at least 30 minutes before when I um, email the zoom link to you anyways guys looking forward to the webinar and showing you really um, how to um, trade the fundamentals and the rules behind the fundamental game anyways guys have a great uh, week and see most of you or some of you on Thursday and uh, take care guys speak soon